Hello. Happy New Year. Welcome. I'm Anne Marie Luthro, Annie M. I am a benefit auction specialist with Markham Agency, and I want to welcome you to our inaugural Markham Minute. This is where we drop bite sized bite sized bursts of brilliance about all things fundraising. Hey everybody, I'm Amanda Valley, and just like my good friend Annie M, I'm also a benefit auction specialist with Markham Agency. Hello friends, I'm Molly May, and I'm a, as you guessed, a benefit auction specialist with Markham Agency. So, have you got a minute? I guess you do, because you're watching our Markham Minute. Huh, but I'm bummed. Nice, Molly. Okay, so let's use our minute wisely. We want to talk about school fundraising in this minute. So very soon, these very dark, short, wet days that we are experiencing right now will lead us to spring. And spring means school fundraising season. So I know I am already in meetings with schools and it will be here before we know it. Boy, that's for sure, Annie M. I've started my meetings too. You know, we have all been fundraising for schools for many years now. It is so much fun, but we have noticed that the same problems pain points, if you will, return year after year. We've identified the most common problems and we have identified their solutions. Yes, so here's the first and probably most common pain point school fundraisers experience, a lack of historical knowledge. Not knowing what the committee did in years past, not knowing what worked and what didn't work. This means you have to reinvent the wheel year after year. Yeah, for a lot of reasons, school fundraising committees have a really high turnover rate. You know, the parents may age out when their kids age out. Sometimes it's a particular grades parents that host the fundraising. Um, so unless last year's chair left this year's committee a very detailed roadmap, which is not very common in our experience, there is a lot of institutional knowledge that's just lost. There's a lot of incomplete data. and. At Markham, we are a data-driven company, so we hate this for you. <laughs> Boy, we sure do hate that for you, but we have solutions to help you. Solutions that don't involve reinventing the wheel year after year after year. Reach out to us because I know that we can help. <laughs> now, another common pain point we run into with school for fundraising is messaging and communications. Yes, this one's a biggie, Amanda. Messaging, mission language, storytelling. We can all agree education is priceless. And we can all agree we want the best education for our kids, for all kids. But you need to deliver this message in such a way that it makes people want to give, that it inspires people to give, as opposed to just nodding their heads in agreement. Yes, totally nodding my head in agreement with that. Yes, it is so important. And I think especially with schools where we often see uh, distracted parents or mm -hmm. overserved guests or, you know, drunk, um, the messaging and the storytelling really need to be on point to corral these folks and to focus their attention. These parents sometimes forget that they're at a fundraiser. Yeah, you know, Contrary to popular belief, overserved guests are not, and let's say it louder for the people in the back, not generous guests. So keep the messaging on point and the drinks in moderation, at least until the fundraising part is over. As for the after party, let your guests go nuts or bananas or whatever they're not allergic to and have a safe ride home, of course. Yeah, Amanda, this talk of excess is a perfect segue into our final school pain point. Don't go overboard. More mm -hmm. is not always better. Too many revenue streams at competing price points, too many games, too many activities, too many speakers. Sometimes less is more. Oh, it's so true, Molly. Cramming too much of anything into your fundraising event results in fewer donations. I know, right? That seems counterintuitive but it's true, we have the data to prove it. We can help you come up with the perfect cocktail. 
Oh, more cocktail talk, I see. The perfect <laughs> cocktail of mission-focused activities, stories, speeches, and sales to make your school supporters happy. Yeah, that makes me think of silent auctions, oh, which yeah. are often another very misguided piece of school fundraising. They can um, really go off the rails. They can miss <laughs> the mark, and go in the weeds, all those things. And there is a method there is a way to do it. So I'm, I'm not complaining. I have to say I love school fundraising and I love that we have so many schools and foundations, educational foundations as our long, long-term long partners. And we have you know the small and scrappy and the large and lavish. We love supporting schools. And I, you know, secret disclosure for me, some of my favorite long-term clients are the schools. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. More well-funded schools. So important. We love to make that a reality. Yeah. So we have to ask, have you booked your school fundraiser yet? I mean, you still have time, but I wouldn't wait too long because our calendars are filling up fast. I'm already booking out October and talking about 2025. I don't know about the two of you. Yeah, yeah, it's filling fast. And I already have some frustrated clients because my calendar is full, which is a yeah. good thing and a bad thing. So yeah. thank you guys so much. We talked about the historical data that's so important to hold on to, the messaging, the mission talk that is so key to your fundraising, distracted parents and how to handle that situation and too many revenue streams. So a lot of good bursts that we dropped tonight, uh, this morning rather. Thank you so much for joining us for our inaugural Mark a Minute. We hope you come back for more. Have a great fundraising season. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.